the next kind of work that we're going to investigate with integrals here is that of lifting work. The third category we'll look at after this is pumping, which is basically like lifting a liquid. So a lot of what we do in this example will carry over to our next topic. The example we're given is that a 200 pound chain is 100 feet long and hangs over the side of a building. And that's the picture I've drawn down here to the side. The question asks, how much work does it take to raise this chain to the top? Now stop for a second and think about why we need an integral to do this problem. If a problem said, for instance, that a 200 pound weight needed to be lifted 100 feet, we wouldn't need any integration. The work would just be 200 pounds times 100 feet because work is just force times distance. However, if either one of those is changing, if force or distance isn't just a constant, that's when integration comes into play. Now let's think about why that's true here. In this case, if you start pulling this chain up over the top of the building, so you start raising it here and piling it up next to you on the side of the building, the force you need to use will change as you go. Because as you start pulling up the chain, less and less of it will hang over the side, and so it will get lighter as you go until the very end. So there's a change here in force, but we're actually going to think about the change in distance as well in a similar way. So that's our hint that integration is necessary because force and distance are not just constants. To take on this problem, we have to think about it very carefully. And we're going to go back to where we started with work as an integral and how we talked about if force or distance is changing, what you can do is divide your interval into small distances. So what we're going to think about is dividing this chain into small lengths. If you think of it as a chain, you could think about one link at a time, for instance, if that helps. And we'll call that delta x. So let me zoom in and draw a little visual of one section of the chain which I've just drawn as a straight cable without bothering to draw links or anything. But this represents a zoomed in version of the chain and we'll divide this into small segments, each of length delta x. So that's a very small length. And we'll assume that that length will all need to be lifted the same distance, which is a reasonable approximation. And of course, eventually that distance will become a very, very thin infinitesimal piece of the chain so that approximation will become reality. So we're going to focus on that little piece and we're going to think about the work needed to lift just that little piece. So what we want is we want the work for one slice and then we're going to take the sum of all of those little slices. So if we can figure out the work needed to lift one little slice then we can use that to integrate. So think about the force and the distance for this little piece. First of all, let's think about the force on one slice. So I'll use a subscript slice here. The force is the weight of that little piece. The weight might be tricky at first, but notice the information we're given we're told that this chain is 200 pounds in total and it's 100 feet long. From that, we can figure out the unit weight. If, for instance, our slice was one foot long, you should be able to tell pretty easily that that would be two pounds. If it was two feet long, it would be four pounds. Notice what we're doing is we're multiplying the length of the chain, at least the segment we're looking at, by a unit weight. So that's going to be the unit weight times the length. Now the length is just delta x. And the unit weight, remember if it's one foot long, we would multiply the length by two pounds. If it's two feet long, we would multiply the length two feet by two pounds again. So what we did is we divided 200 pounds by 100 feet, and we figured out the unit weight 
is 200 divided by 100 or two pounds per foot. So if we just divide the total weight by the total length, that's the weight per foot. And then no matter what delta x is, whether it's larger or smaller than a foot, if we multiply that by two, we get the weight of that one slice. So the force is just two delta x. That may be one of the trickier parts here. So if you need to go back and review that a couple of times, that's okay. But once you do it a few times, this becomes relatively familiar. So the force is not too bad. We just found the unit weight and multiplied it by the length that we've chosen, this little delta x of our slice. Now the distance, in order to calculate the distance, we need a variable x because when we make one of these slices, the slice occurs at some location x. So we need to have a coordinate system set up. And I mention this here because you'll see this a lot when we do pumping problems. You just need to pick a reasonable coordinate system and stick with it. I'll show you the one that I tend to use here. I tend to start x at the top and measure downward. So in other words, up here, x equals zero, and down at the bottom of the chain, x equals 100, halfway between x equals 50, and so on. So it's like we're turning our coordinate system sideways, but we're measuring x downward and starting at the top. With any of these lifting or pumping problems, you need to think about what direction things are moving in, and that tends to be the right one to use for your coordinate system. So we're moving things vertically, we're lifting, so x is going to be measured either up or down. If, on the other hand, you chose the bottom of the chain as your zero point and measured x up from there, that would be entirely fine. You would get the correct answer at the end as long as you're careful and you pay attention to it. I just find it easier for this one to select x at the top. In the pumping problems we'll do after this, I will show you a couple of variations where you can start your coordinate system at the top of the picture or at the bottom. It's always measured vertically, so you'll measure either downward from the top or upward from the bottom, and you'll see how you get the same answer either way. It really just comes down to what's easiest for you. And the easiest thing may be to just always use the top as your zero and measure x downward from there. Or if you are comfortable with that and you want to try something different, it may turn out that the algebra somewhere will be easier with a different coordinate system. But we'll see examples of this. I just wanted to point it out in this one because it's an important piece to the puzzle. Now when we cut one of these slices, when we do so, our slice is at some variable position x. Right, and that position changes depending on where we pick our slice, but an arbitrary slice, we're just going to say that's at location x. The distance it needs to be raised, if you stop and think about it for a second, it's pretty simple that it just needs to be raised x feet. If x is 50, it needs to be raised 50 feet. If x is 100 down here at the bottom, it needs to be raised 100 feet. If x is 25, it only needs to go up 25 feet. So whatever the x value of our slice is, the distance will just equal x. So the distance that our slice needs to be lifted is just equal to x. Pause for a second and think about what if you set the coordinate system at the bottom. So pretend for a minute that instead we set our coordinate system here instead of using the one we're using. In that case, we would still call the position of the slice x, but now x equals zero would be at the bottom, x equals 100 would be at the top. And it may take a little bit of thought to figure out how you could express the distance in terms of x. Stop and think about it for a minute and pause the video and see if you can come up with what the result would be. And then I'll tell you. The answer is that the distance would be 100 minus x. Because at the bottom, when x is zero, you would need to lift it 100 feet. In other words, you would need to lift it the 100 feet minus how far you've already traveled up, which you haven't traveled up at all at that point, so it would be the full 100 feet. As you go up to, say, x equals 50, 
you would only need to travel a remaining 50 feet, or the total 100 minus the 50 you've already covered. So it would be 100 minus x. And if you would like, you can go through after we're done with the problem and see if you can get the same answer by using that coordinate system. Okay, but I don't want to confuse you too much with all the different variations you can use. So back to our picture here, we have x starting at the top being measured downward. We already figured out the force by figuring out the unit weight and multiplying by delta x. And then the distance is just x, and that's fairly easy because of where we chose to put our zero for the coordinate system. Once we have those two, the work for one slice is just equal to force times distance, the product of those two. Two times delta x times x. And of course, we'll write the delta x at the end because it's going to turn into dx in just a minute. This means that the total work is the sum of all those. And of course, as we move from an approximation to the exact value, work will be the integral of 2x dx. And all we need is limits of integration in order to finish the problem. If we go back to the picture and think about the limits of integration, what are the values of x at the beginning and at the end, or at the top and the bottom of the chain? If we're covering the full distance of the chain, we're lifting all of it, we would need to move all the way from x equals 0 at the top to x equals 100 at the bottom. So that would be 0 to 100. And the hard work is done here. We've got the integral set up. The integral is a very easy one to work out. So if you're focusing on this problem, make sure you focus on the setup. Make sure you understand where all these pieces came from and that you could do one just like it. Integrating, of course, gives us x squared from 0 to 100. So that would be 100 squared minus 0 squared or 10,000 pound feet or foot pounds. So that's the amount of work. And of course, we're using English units, so we get pound feet at the end. I want to pause here after we've gotten the answer and talk about a couple of variations you might see on this problem. The main one you'll see is on the homework, you may see something like a 200 pound chain like this. Say we added a weight at the bottom. So pretend for a minute that there's a 500 pound weight at the bottom. How would you do the problem then? It turns out that most of our work is done. That single unit weight, that point mass down at the bottom, doesn't need any integral to deal with it. That one we can handle in the simple way where we just multiply force times distance. So the work needed to lift the chain and the work needed to lift that mass at the bottom, we could evaluate separately. We could do the work for the chain the way we just did. And then the weight at the bottom would add 500 pounds times 100 feet or 50,000 pound feet of work to the problem. So all you would do is at the end of the problem, you would calculate that force times the distance it's lifted and add it on to the previous answer. So if you see one like that on the homework, it doesn't make life really any harder. It's just one extra step of pretty simple math. One other thing I want to point out here is that those of you who like clever answers to questions, you might enjoy knowing that there's a clever way to do this one that doesn't actually need an integral. And it kind of goes back to a physics or engineering trick, which is that if you've got an object like this that's spread out, so our, the weight of this chain is distributed across 100 feet, often you can condense an object like that down to its center of mass and pretend that it's all concentrated at the center of mass. So in other words, you could pretend that you've got a 200 pound weight sitting right here in the middle. And that's all you've got to work with. And you can think, what if we lifted a 200 pound weight half the distance or 50 feet? So we place that point mass at the center of mass of this chain right in the middle. And we would need to lift it then 50 feet. And if you multiply 200 pounds times 50 feet, sure enough, you get 10,000 pound feet. So there's a little shortcut. And of course, we're doing a calculus class, so we're interested in the integral, and we don't want to take those shortcuts. But it's always nice to know that they're there and that things work out well. So if you like the physics side of things, that may be interesting to you. 
But on these lifting problems, you always want to think about splitting it into these little slices. We'll do the same thing when we do pumping problems afterward. And then find the weight or the force for that slice, the distance for that slice, and then multiply those together to get the work. And that's what shows up inside the integral. So we'll go on now to pumping problems and a lot of these ideas will come back in those.